Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Ida Markarian. I'm a customer success agent as well as the onboarding agent, and I'll be hosting with this webinar today called Enhance Your Experience. What we'll be looking at today will be how to generate a 360 panoramic view, how to use the cloud and search effectively, awareness of our 2020 community, and how to contact customer success. Now we're going to be reviewing a design file and a 360 panoramic rendering. There's a lot of information to process uh, before getting your final 360 panoramic view. So when we're going to be setting up a file, what you'll need to do is evaluate all of your light sources, whether it's from windows, doors, light fixtures, or the fact you may even have an open room. So all of these uh, will play a factor in uh, how your rendering is going to look. So from at that point, you'll be able to determine what additions you'll need to do to your rendering in order to get the best lighting and generate the best view uh, to send off to your customers. We're going to be reviewing this file in particular. So I will be switching over to the actual design program. And I will show you quickly. Here is our actual perspective window. So you will see that I'm not casting too much light from the windows. And I have spotlights in the room. So if I look around this window as well, I don't see a lot of reflection from the light um, generated from the windows. However, if I was to go the other way, and I can show you basically, there is an area off to the side of this design that's there specifically to show you. There you're going to see there's a little bit of light coming from the other side. Now, the reason of that is because we adjusted a couple of the preferences for the lighting. So this here on this side is where I have left it original. When you add a doorway, patio, uh, or windows, you always get your light property. So this is where it plays a factor. These light properties are always set to bright white, and that's where you would want to select the color and change that. And you will see on the three windows on the other side, which is the main area for the rendering, the light properties have been adjusted to reflect a darker color. So I've gone into the custom section and I've adjusted the color here. Basically, I'm not changing the actual light. I'm not changing the actual window. All I'm doing, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> all I'm doing is just adjusting the amount of light that's penetrating this window. And what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to show you, in other words, what we want to get to. So if we want to get to our perspective module where I can pan around the room and review what my lighting looks like, there's two ways about it. Either we go to presentation and then the perspective view, or up top we launch the little perspective shortcut button. And I will show that to you again. So we go to presentation, and we go to perspective view, or we have our shortcut button always embedded up here. And these are buttons that you can add or remove depending on what you use. So we're going to be reviewing. When we start up our 360 panoramic view, we always start off with our perspective module. And then we have our little icon for our 360 panoramic rendering. Once we launch our panoramic rendering, we are presented with this box. So we're going to determine where we want to place the camera, or we can choose to auto center. Of course, as per my design, on the right-hand side of that floor plan, I do not want that area to be displayed. So I will be physically moving the camera to where you see it now. I will set it to 50 inches high from the floor because I determined that that's a better visual for the floor plan that I have currently. And the quality, we always want to set that to medium. It is still going to generate a good quality, especially if your perspective window has automatically been set to high. As far as the 360 panoramic is going, on the current version of the program, it will not be able to handle a high quality rendering. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hit the Publish button at the bottom. Once you hit your Publish button on the bottom, you're going to be presented with an information box. This is where you need to in enter your information as the designer, and then the customer information. So all the red asterisks is where you need to absolutely fill in the info. So naturally, it's your name, your email, and then the customer's name and email. You can also include in your email that's going to be generated with your 360 panoramic link, because basically when you get the 360 panoramic rendering, it comes up as an um, internet link. 
So that's going to be uh, sent out to the customer should you put their email directly. And the link will be a part of that email. Now you can also include a message to the customer. This little information box can also be um, set up beforehand. So if, if you can see the little arrow pointing to chart when starting a new design, this information box can be pulled up at any point in time during the rendering, <clears throat> during your work of 2020, I should say, as well as <clears throat> you can pull it up later if you'd like, or just wait until you need to do a 360. So if you do use this box, all the information should already be there. Once you hit that Send button, the 360 panoramic rendering begins. And once it's done, you'll be receiving an email. So as I mentioned, the email that you'll be receiving basically looks like this. So it tells you you as a dealer have received a copy. If you've included your email in both fields, so same as the customer, instead of sending it to the customer, you just send it to yourself, both copies. That way you can review the rendering and determine if you're going to forward it to the customer. And as I said, you will be getting a link that opens up your 360 panoramic rendering. And I will show you what that actually looks like. So once the 360 is generated, this is the visual. So it looks as though it's a perspective view, same as your design rendering. However, the perspective module in your design is a little bit different than this one. So if you can see, I can zoom in. I can notice details. I see all of the information that's in my 360 panoramic here. So as you can see, my windows are not too bright. I haven't generated too much light from those windows. I've increased the intensity of my light fixtures, so that's why they're very bright um, all over the ceiling. And then in that other room, since we left the patio door to white texture for the light properties, you see that it washes everything out. It's very difficult to make out anything that could be over there. So had I not changed my window textures to that gray that I customized, then I would have had that similar reflection up top or at the bottom of the window, washing things out. And this is fairly important when you have a countertop. So in this instance, if I scroll around here, I wouldn't have been able to make out any detail of the countertop, and the cabinetry here would have been washed out as well. So this is why it's important to review all of the details of your floor plan and make sure that you have set all of the right properties before you get your rendering going. Now one of the other things that um, we're going to look at is our cloud. So this is our um, virtual-based catalog. So in other words, um, you have your cloud account, which is from 2020 Spaces. So if you have a soft key, then obviously that is to manage your account for users and subscriptions. And the 2020.NET is where you will find the file-based catalogs and new versions and hotfixes and such. Now the actual cloud within the program is our uh, virtual-based catalogs. So there's two good ways that I found uh, are the better ways to search. And I generally always find everything I'm looking for by these two different ways of searching. So the first one is you make sure that you have your all selected. You choose one catalog that you know you're looking through. And then you have a submenu that you can go through. And then you pick and choose the item that you want. So if we were to review our 2020 design, our cloud is right over here. Our sign-in is right up at top here. Okay. But basically what we're going to do, I like to switch it to 160 items per page because I don't want to be scrolling through multiple pages, just more items per page. And while it's thinking, I'm also going to be sending the list view. So I don't need the item name or description. I want a grid view. So if I need to see the information on this item here, I'm not sure what it is, I can pop this open and I'll be able to review. And I can close it back up or leave it open depending on the size of your computer screen. So if I review the way that we searched the first time, if I know the catalog I'm looking through, then I choose only that one catalog by unselecting all of the choices. I like to keep my first row to the All Selected. This makes sure that it does the turn of all the manufacturers. And of course, I want to be looking through the decorative items of 2020 because I'm going to be able to get my table of contents here to my catalog and go through chairs and tables. If I want it to be even more specific, I can pop this open and say, show me the bar stool. 
So if we are typing in a search word for a filter, we cannot be too specific. But because I'm going through this submenu, I'm able to really pinpoint what I'm looking for. So if I decide that this is in fact the chair that I want to be using, so let's see if this bar stool meets my requirements. I'll pop this open. I'll verify my height and whatnot. And I'll say, well, maybe I want to go with something a little bit different. So I'll go with this one. It's a little bit higher, but a little bit of more of a square. So I can just drag it and drop it in. My image just flashed across the screen, advising me that my item has been imported. And now that that's been done, I can double click to go into the attributes, or right click to go into the attributes. And once I'm here, I will see my image has been properly imported into my floor plan. And then I can choose to change any of these sizes if I would like to, or go into the variables over here and change any of the textures that came in from this original item. Now, like I said, there is two ways to search. So the second way would be to select all on both rows and just type in a filter word. So because some people are not sure exactly which catalog they're going to go through. Some of you might be so new, you don't know where you're going to find any of your items. So we're going to just select all on the catalog theme. So we're going to be looking through all of our catalogs. But if I want to look for a bar stool, well, if I type in bar stool like this, it might not necessarily give me my results. So what I'm going to do is, try to figure out what's going to be my better option for my search word to find the item that I'm looking for. So in this instance, stool as bar stool are two separate words, and it's not plural. So because all of the bar stools in the 2020 design have that word within the item, it will pop open all of the results from the category stool. And then say um, I haven't put the item in, then I just simply drag and drop. Say I have this item in, and I decided to come back and review my file. And I decided, OK, well, I'm going to use this one because this one looks more like the item the customer might have. And I want it to be more realistic, more appealing to the customer. So having selected the bar stool that I originally dropped in, I'll select the other one I want to replace it with and simply hit Replace. My image will import that I've replaced it. And now that it has, I can, again, verify and make sure that my settings, um, if I want to keep them or change them, and textures and whatnot. So pretty much uh, very simple, those two ways to search into the cloud. So just remember, first row is always selected all catalogs. And second row, depending on if you know which catalog you're searching through. So if it's all because you're not sure, your category gets blocked, you type in a filter, and then you'll be able to kind of pinpoint a little bit further. or you select the one catalog on the second row, and you get your table of contents to that catalog in the categories row. Now the other thing that we're going to be also looking at is our community. Our 2020 community is where uh, you will be able to uh, sign in with your cloud account. And if you uh, needed any help, you'd be able to uh, either search through what's been asked or type in your own information that you needed help with. Basically, the community is a forum site. So this is where you would be able to kind of review exactly what is concerned and get any help. And these answers are given by other users, so other designers, just kind of keeping everybody in the same neighborhood of uh, helping each other out. Or your answers could even be coming from our own agents from Customer Success Team. So if we were to go to the forums, because obviously I don't need to go to the uh, guidelines. Uh, we're going to choose the, ca the category. So obviously in our instance, it would be the 2020 design. So we're going to 2020 design. And the first one that comes up here, uh, let's see. I did notice that 29 minutes ago. All right, so we have somebody here that has a question or maybe needs some help. Just half an hour ago they asked. So this person has posted that she's got some problems. Um, so she's attached a high quality rendering. So you can see that you can also add in an image. Okay, I believe her question is in relation to that refrigerator texture. So uh, the sandiness, yes. So basically, uh, you're going to see sometimes that you can get this type of texture. And it's just a 
little bit of uh, rendering preferences that we need to set. That's all that it is. And then it will show up perfectly um, stainless steel texture with the reflection. So if we actually scroll down, you will see here that um, this uh, also could be, of course, a graphic card related issue. But you will see that it's been answered by one of our own. So you will see if you come up with a better answer, you would be able to reply directly here. Now if I go back to my main page, I can show you that if you scroll down, once you're signed in up top to your uh, 2020 Cloud account, you can actually put in your own topic. So you can create a topic, and then you can post it, put in a description. And then if you had an image to upload so that somebody can help you out, you'd be able to just choose the file and upload it there. So really straightforward. Uh, that's more or less how the community works, and everybody helps everybody out. And um, it also shows you here that you can refer to the Knowledge Center. So we did touch base on that on the first webinar, but nothing to be worried about. That's just an articles page that we draw out um, as we go along. So that way we can help with that if uh, anybody needs any further assistance regarding any information. And so just to kind of look through, this would be the page that we scroll down to the bottom to get. Uh, we will also be sending up a follow-up email to allow you to choose if you want a one-on-one -on -one session after completing a survey following this webinar. We're also going to be including a copy of the PowerPoint presentation, and that is going to be sent to those who have registered. Now I have also included the links. So these are most of the links that uh, are needed to get any further help or whatever uh, information that we offer. So you don't need to worry about writing these down because as I mentioned, you will be receiving a copy. Therefore, you will have all this information. Contact us if you need anything. Our customer success team is open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can reach us at 1-866-697-2020. Or you can email us at residentialsupport at 2020spaces.com.